Well hello and a really warm welcome to the channel. I hope you're all keeping well and today I've got something a bit different to share with you. Now I was hoping for sunshine, I'm out on my lockdown decking but it's raining but I'm okay under this shelter and I've assembled a group of items to show you and the intention is whether it's in this video or the next or even the next we're going to try and get this live steam rocket up and running. So we're going right back to 1978 here and here's the Hornby Live Steam 3.5 inch gauge rocket. What an impressive looking model. It's resting on some bespoke track that my dad made when he bought this item in 1978. He took it out of the box and put it on display. It's never been steamed and it's always been in the house. Now when he died in the 90s my mum tidied it away into a cupboard and I think it's high time we do something with it. I've been up in the roof and I've managed to find the original box and a couple of other items. Sadly the boxes have suffered a bit up in the roof but the items I think they're going to be okay. We've got a coach to go behind it and an extra box of tracks so I do think at some point we'll be able to assemble a fairly decent length of track. It says on the box I believe that there's 25 feet of track in there. Um, so if we've got that same amount in the main box that's 50 feet of track so that should really be quite good fun if we can get this recommissioned. So I think over this video in the next video or maybe three however long it takes we're going to try and bring this back into operating condition. So what a great looking item from 1978. I've been through and found as much paperwork as I can. Um, we're going to take a look at all that in a minute. There's an instruction leaflet, um, a sort of publicity sheet and uh, there's one or two references from the 70s, late 70s. We've got the 78, 79 and 1980s catalogue. There's just some brief mentions. So, yes. Now, if you do remember a year or so ago, perhaps a bit longer, I got the Mamod live steam. Um, that's more like an O-gauge loco up and running. That was great fun. I'll leave a link to that video if you're interested. So I think it is time for a bit more live steam action on the channel. So... I think we'll take a look at the boxes and the paperwork first. So let me get the camera up on its stand and then I can show you a little bit more about this set of items. OK, well I've got both hands free now so it's time to see what I can show you from the catalogue. So here's the 1978 catalogue. Now nothing in the actual catalogue itself but let me get the price list because it's quite interesting. Now I am battling a bit of a breeze out here but hopefully we'll be okay. Can you see that? Hornby Steam G100 The Rocket suggested retail TBA and uh, we're looking at January 1978 so it's in the price list Nothing in the catalogue, well nothing in my copy of the catalogue, there might very well have been an insert that's missing. But when we get to 1979, that changes a bit. Now my 1979 catalogue, there's nothing in the catalogue itself, but there was this really quite lovely insert in the catalogue. And that, hopefully you can see, says real steam train set, 25 feet of track three and a half inch gauge model Stevenson's rocket and look there's some impressive vapor emerging from the chimney stack and there it is now on the back a little bit more information about the history of the actual real item but what I'm interested in is some of these points here water overfill safety that sounds good and um, not really specifications, but this looks good, doesn't it? Safety valve. Now we need to check that thoroughly. The loco runs on less than 10 psi, so that's not a terribly high pressure. But any excess is safely released through the safety valve. Well, we'll be checking that out, I can assure you. 
And on this publication, there's no mention of the coach or the points, but it does say G102, 25 feet of track. Now that was 1979, so let's take a look at the price list. And that's, uh, let's get that into the camera. Um, 3rd of January, I don't know what that means. Commission approval, hopefully these are retail prices. But let's find Hornby, here we are, Hornby Steam. And already we see that it's at the high price of 59.95. Let me just see if I can get that better. G100 rocket set, 102, G102, the track, available in spring, £9.75. And a pair of Y points, 4.95, I bet they're great. Haven't actually got any of those, but would be interesting to see them. No mention of the coach on that price list. Now, I'm going to jump forward to 1980 now. Now, I don't have a catalogue any later than 1980 because that tends to be my cut-off point when it comes to collecting. Now, again, the catalogue itself, now in portrait mode. Um, no mention of the rocket inside the actual catalogue, but let's see if we can see here we go. So, Hornby Steam, G100 rocket set. Look at that, in the, in the space of a year, we've gone from 59 to 99.95. Heck of an increase. And uh, the track's up to £12.50. Points, 6.95. And there, the coach is mentioned. New, available in the summer of 1980. It's £29.95. Now, that's all the paperwork I have publicity-wise for this model. But I have got these really impressive instructions. Now, I'm not going to go right through them at the moment. We'll refer to them possibly as we get through the model. But lots and lots of information. And... Great stuff there, tells us all about filling the boiler, oiling, fueling, lighting up. Sounds good, doesn't it? So, a lot to look at. Right, let's take a look at the items in boxes. Now, I probably won't pause the video. Let me see if I can get the coach. So, G104, coach, and it says, opening doors, detailed interior, alternative names. Well, I think we know on the Triang model we've got Times, Endurance, oh, the third name seems to escape me at the moment, recommended for use under adult supervision, so I'll probably have to go and find a responsible adult at some point. Let's see if I can slip this out. So we've got a white cardboard interior. Right. These don't actually look like Hornby issue items. Quite nice yellow duster there of a traction engine. So Seems to be a pair of those. Oh, and here we have another duster. Look at this. Stevenson's Rocket. So I imagine they have come from a visit out at some time. So let me see now whether I can lift it out of the box and get it into view. So I'm just going to put it in front of the loco. Just bear with me a second while I move a couple of items. And let's see whether that will now be visible to you all. So we've got a couple of foam ends. Just remove those. It is slightly dusty. And tucked in the bottom of the box. These could very well be the names. They um, seem to be protected by staples in the corners. Never been opened. Uh, I think uh, 
it's impossible for me to transcribe those from forwards to backwards. I do think that is times. Um, but some of the other words, I don't know whether I can just gently have a look. OK, so we've got times, traveller and treasurer, I believe. So not the same names as is on the triang items. There's something else in the box. Let's have a look. Rocket coach, three and a half inch gauge. So procedures on there for putting the new names on the coach. Excellent uh, information. Safety note, remember that methylated spirit is inflammable. Quite interesting. I think the instructions for putting on these um, transfers or decals looks quite comprehensive. Right, so let's take a look at this great looking model. Look at those big heavy metal wheels there. Let's just turn it over. We've got some sort of drawbar assembly there that seems to have twisted round. Very much a plastic construction though, so we need to be careful. We know how time takes its toll on plastic, but look, a lovely item, isn't it? And these doors apparently open, so I think you turn. It's got a turning catch. Look at this. If I put the catch down, you can see a little turning catch. Glazed windows, seating detail, lovely model, but like I say, very, very much a full plastic construction. Details on the roof, and uh, on the end, we've got steps up to the top and plastic buffers. But it's a great looking item, isn't it? Let's pop that down just there. So we can imagine that under steam, that rocket pulling that coach is going to look quite impressive. OK, let's take a look at the next box. So I'm just going to slip the outer cover off. I will show it to you briefly. G102. 25 feet of track, 96 pieces of three and a half inch gauge track. It's an interesting design, this track. We'll take a look at it. So let me just move the coach. Quite useful having the gaps in the table between the planks. I don't think the coach will run away. So, just opening the box here. Now, stacked in nicely, never removed. Maybe there's paperwork in the bottom, I don't know. I'm not going to get it all out, but here's some track. And what you'll notice is that one section is longer than the other. So, when you join it, if you oppose the long and the short, and let's see if I can just slip this in on the camera. It's quite stiff. So if we oppose the long and the short, we get a straight join. Now, I'm just going to pull this out carefully. I'm always worried about plastic and age. So that gives us a straight join. Now, if I reverse it and put short to short and long to long, I'll just it's a bit reluctant to clip in there, just there we go. You can see we've got the start of a curve, so it's a really clever design, isn't it? And that doesn't look a terribly huge radius. Let's get another item in just to see which is the long bit, which is the short bit. I think um, we need it around this way. Let's have a look. It does clip together really nicely, so look. Hopefully that will show on the camera. We've got the start of a curve. Well, no, I've been a bit of an idiot there. I've not uh, done that correctly. Let me reverse it. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? I don't know what I'm talking about some of the time. 
So there's our curve. So yeah, I think this is going to be quite good. It looks like it's got holes in it to be fixed down. And uh, what's it say on the back? I don't know whether you can... You know, it's a bit difficult in this light, isn't it? But it's uh, it does say Hornby made in England and uh, G102010 I believe and then possibly a, pat a patent number, yeah. But great stuff. Not very thick the profile but uh, yeah. So lots of track. Right, I'm going to reach over now and get the main box. Now there is an interesting sticker on this. I don't know whether I can get this into the camera view. Hornby Hobbies, Westwood Margate, Kent. No date on there, but it says to CAB Models, 75 Kettering Road, Northampton, NN1 4AW. Well, I do remember that shop. I think I've mentioned it before. And uh, sadly, one of the many model shops consigned to history. Now, I'm just going to put this down on the floor to ease it out of the carton, so bear with me. Right, well I'm sure that's too big for the camera, but it's a really big box. So I'm going to try and take the lid off and see what's in it. Lovely picture on the front. Well there's some more paperwork in here, now let's try and get a bit more room. Now the old wind is playing games with me, so I'll just retrieve that. Now here's an interesting thing to look at. Oh. Right, just bear with me. I need to weight this paperwork down or it's all going to go amiss. Here we go. So, where was I? Hornby Hobbies. Rovex Service Centre, Albert Street, Ramsgate. There's a date on there, 7th of the 12th, 1978. Dispatch date, 7th of the 12th, and it says, one filling funnel, one instruction leaflet, no charge, apologies for the omission. So obviously, when the model was bought, some items missing. So, quite a nice thing to have. These, indeed, are the instructions that were supplied. Another one of those really nice publicity leaflets. And then let's just take a quick look. So we've got another lot of pieces of track. Okay, so what have we got here? So that looks like filling funnel. Some sort of a spanner. And I believe that's a chimney cap. Right, well that's the packaging and paperwork all gone through, so I think I'm going to have a little bit of a tidy up and then we'll start taking a look at the model itself. Okay, well the tender is permanently coupled by the gas pipe. Now I've just had a go at undoing that and I need a better fitting spanner so I've been and got a couple of spanners because I want to split the two so I'm just going to put the spanners on the nuts. Yeah that's undone now because I want to get the tender separated from the loco so I'm just going to undo that nut there and then see whether I can yeah, it's a bit stiff that pipe, don't want to damage it. I'm going to undo the little coupling so it's just the pipe. 
that really is quite stiff in there. So let's see if I can encourage it out. Oh, success. So I think we can have a close look at the tender now. So if I bring that into view, I'm going to ease this barrel off. And the first thing we can see is there's quite a bit of paint loss underneath the barrel. And here's the gas tank. So I'll just unscrew that. So that looks like it's got a normal filler valve in there for light fuel. We've got the fitting on there complete with an o-ring. And it looks to me like if I look at this tender now the paint is cracking and flaking off in several different places. So just age I guess. Lovely heavy metal axles and wheels but everything else is plastic. And then underneath we've got a nice coil in that gas pipe to give it a little bit of shock absorption. So not really much more to see on the tender. We've got a very, very delicate looking hook there that the coach will go to. And what I can see, it might not show on the camera, but there's already evidence of a crack in this. So the plastic is drying out. So care to be taken. And here's the drawbar here that goes to the loco. So that screw seems to be loose. Just tighten that up so it doesn't fall. Just be very careful. So there's definitely some age about this. There is writing on there, Hornby, and then built in Britain, and I think it says G101. Wheels revolve quite nicely. Anyway, that's the tender and the gas tank, and then of course we've got this barrel which just slips over. So the whole thing looks quite good. Bit of a coal load in there. Right, let's just see if I can hold this. So look at this. We've got double acting cylinders and they're operate there. There is a valve that you can see sliding at the back of the piston that directs the steam. And that's working on a cam off the wheels. The wheels are actually geared so the piston speed doesn't connect directly to the wheel. There is a slight reduction I think because I would imagine this could be if it's anything like the Mamod that I ran the other year it could go like the absolute clappers. The boilers obviously hidden away in there. We've got a filler cap here quite tight. Um, big burner control. I mean that's not exactly to scale is it? And uh, a burner hidden away in there and it looks like that goes through a pipe that could go through the centre of the boiler and again we've got lots of metal in this which is great. Hornby built in Britain G100 1570 so yeah quite a nice thing. Lots of detail. Now I have done a little bit of reading on the internet and of course you find loads out and it transpires that they modified the safety valve on this model. Now this is an early model so this is just a filler cap. On the later models it's a filler cap and a safety valve. Now what this means for us is that the safety valve is hidden under there. Now this is not removable so if there's a problem with the safety valve it's going to be a complete strip down. Right, I want you to bear with me now because I'm just going to put this down, put the bung here and I want to show you a couple of items. Now I just need to move a couple of bits. Well, let me show you what I've gathered together. Well I've got the plant pot, that's from Mrs Snooze, so we can put that under there and I'm going to move the actual engine. So let me just try and get this in shot. So the back wheel is against a stop. 
So we've now got the engine up in the air and I think it'd be a good experiment to introduce some compressed air into this so I don't want to go and spend ages in the workshop making a special fitting so I've been in the sports cupboard from when the kids were small and I've found something for pumping up an airbed or a football and some PTFE tape and if you bear with me I've got something else. So just out of shot there but I'll see if I can show you. I've got an ample supply of compressed air there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pause the recording for a minute, wrap a bit of PTF, let me say it properly, PTFE thread seal tape onto this bit of plastic and see whether we can get some compressed air into this boiler. Okay, well let's take a look at what I've been up to. I've just wrapped some of that PTFE tape around that plastic nozzle. We'll come to that in a minute. I've got a little bit of compressed air on tap. So what's the best way of doing this, I wonder? I'm going to see now whether this... I'm not just going to push it down, I'm going to turn it and see whether I can encourage it to cut into the actual thread and it does seem to be biting. Let's have a feel. Yeah, so I'm going to turn that round hopefully to get it quite tight. Oh, I don't want to shear it off in the boiler so I think that will probably do. Hopefully I can get some compressed air in this now. I've got this plant pot which I'm just going to wedge here. And now I'm going to see what happens when I put compressed air into the item. So let's just clip it on. And I don't know whether you can see the gauge. Try and keep it in the corner of the picture. Yeah, movement at the wheel. So there is a little leak. But we do have motion. Now I have put a little bit of oil on all the moving parts. Now, I'm not going to go any faster than that and I reckon this thing will, as I thought, perhaps go like the clappers when it's under steam. But I'm slightly worried because I've got a little bit of excessive pressure going in according to my gauge, which isn't perhaps that accurate. I've got 20 psi going in there. And there doesn't appear to be any blow off from the safety valve. Okay, well I'm happy with the mechanical side of it, but what I do need to do now is check that safety valve because we're not going to do anything else to this until we know the safety valve is working. So I'm going to press down slightly on the chimney, introduce some pressure. Oh, it's trying to go. Yeah. Oh dear, as much as I thought, I don't want to put too much pressure in this, but that's 30 psi. Yeah, the hissing you can hear is from my improvised connection into the boiler, but we haven't got any, we haven't got anything from that safety valve. Now if you remember on the instructions, I think it said that we were looking at 10 psi. And I'm just going to put my finger over there. No, there's nothing coming out of that. Right, so that's our first problem. I'm just going to disconnect the compressed air. I wonder if that's why Hornby bought the combined filler valve and safety valve out in later models. We've obviously got over the 44 years of its life a problem with the safety valve. I have had a quick look on the internet and this is going to require a complete strip down of the boiler. So I think I'm probably going to bring this video to a close now 
and uh, we'll come back with part two and I think we're going to take the rocket into the workshop and strip out the boiler and see what we find underneath this cover just have a good look at the original safety valve and see why it's stuck. We certainly can't even think about firing this up until we know the safety valve is working correctly and safely. But anyway, it's been great fun. We've already seen the cylinders in action. This thing is going to work, there is no doubt about that. So I'm looking forward to the next stage. And once we get the safety valve fixed, I think we're going to be able to start thinking about getting it steamed. Well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing this video and I look forward to reading your comments. But until the next video, I'll say goodbye. <laughs>